Dus Thomas, hier ga jij dus zondag, maandag, dinsdag helemaal, helemaal tot rust komen. Zorg eens je koffietje en hier ga jij douchen. <laughs> Zo gewoon gebleven, hè, die Thomas. Zo gewoon gebleven. <laughs> A touchdown was in Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. We drove straight away to Burleson, where Fabian's barn was. Fabian is the organizer of uh, Gervalocus, it's his toy barn or car barn. Hello! Oh, it's two hours since touchdown. What is this? It's your toy barn or what? This is where I'm a sugar baby, I'm a trophy <laughs> husband, and uh, my wife. Buys me all these toys. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Fabian knows I love RVs. So the Dutch hippie got the got the big Airstream caravans. And so Thomas and Dennis had a caravan. I had the caravan, and there we slept till Friday morning. So uh, you're in this one. I'm in this one, and Dennis and Tom. That one. Oh, this one. Oh, close. Close. Really close. Oh, that's really nice. Thomas, oh, you our compere that you bent. But you're now in the. Ik heb wel een beetje moeite denk ik met al mijn spullen uitstallen. Dit ding is ouder dan jij. Ja, je, bent net die, je bent die luxe holly daarheen gewend en nu lig je opeens gewoon weer in een caravan. Hier ga jij dus zondag, maandag, dinsdag helemaal, helemaal tot rust komen. Zorg eens je koffietje en hier ga je douchen. <laughs> Zo gewoon gebleven hè, die Thomas. Zo gewoon gebleven. <laughs> Ochtend dag twee. Om ah. te bij de Dennis toch jongens? Dennis bij Dennis. <laughs> Ene, we pakken meteen onze kans. Eerst, ja, zeker. Misschien komt hij niet meer die kans. Ja, nu, uh, <laughs> nu gaan we gewoon lekker naar de Dennis. <laughs> lekker naar de Dennis. Lekker goedkoop. Ja. ja. First day is always breakfast at Dennis. You know, pancakes, bacon, the whole to bang. <laughs> Daar ging de video. Eén de video. Saturday morning race day. Start would be... But the bad thing on Friday was actually, I had a podcast in the morning with, with Ian and he told me Mariah Wilson was, was killed just after the podcast because he knew before but he didn't want to bother me during the podcast. Gisteren wel echt slecht nieuws gehad. <coughs> Mariah Wilson, een uh, Amerikaanse dame, 26 jaar oud, is doodgeschoten in Austin. Ja, heftig verhaal jongens. Uh, ik kan er niks anders van maken. Ik, ik weet sinds gisteren, Thomas en Hossel ook. Uh, ja, dat is nog niet veel bekend. Als je het politiereport leest, dat is het ook wel in verdachte omstandigheden. Dus dat is allemaal weer raar. Familie wil nog niks zeggen. Dus ja, we zijn erg benieuwd. Maar vooral nog zijn de gedachten vooral bij haar familie en zelf vrienden. Actually, the atmosphere on Friday and also Saturday morning of race day was like down. We did the first eight miles neutralized till the till the big water crossing and there we had a moment of silence for Mariah. I think the biggest badass woman in careful races existing, you know, till till then. Um, race started, started also pretty mellow, you know, but after like 30, 40k, Ian started to attack. I think just at, out of pure like sadness, he attacked, you know, and the race was on. And at the end, Jasper Ockelon, uh, the fellow Dutch rider. He had the right moment at like 4k to go when he attacked and people let him go and I got 8 in the burn sprint. I remember being emotional at the finish because the last 20k I was trying to, to attack a lot. I remember thinking what would Mo have done, you know, Mariah, when I, just before I attacked and I really wanted to win the race for her but it didn't succeed and then... Uh, so after the finish I felt empty. Emotional, we went back to the RV of Fabian and we started to have a few beers and waited for Thomas actually, who also did a good race. I think he was like 12th or 13th. Hosso was there, so we had fun and... Uh... Yo, twee uur na de koers. Tevreden hè Tom? Thomas, 15e. Hey, zijn beste resultaat van de laatste twee jaar qua in ieder geval uh, power in die pootjes. En ik werd netjes uh, achtste van de acht. Ik en uh, Hosso die, uh, die, gaat, uh, die is even die dirty story aan het leeg spuiten hier, godverdomme. <laughs> Ook, Ossa gaat lekker naar huis morgen, ja. Ossa gaat naar huis. 
we fast forward to Sunday. Jim from Join gave me and Thomas a six hour training ride. So this was a big ride, 45 degrees Celsius. And I remember being really happy in the first two hours, you know, like, oh, you know, nobody's doing this. It's a day after Gravelocos, not Gravelocos. One hour down, five to go. But then Thomas got more and more quiet. It got more and more hot. We had like three, four liters of, of fluid with us and it was empty. We continued for another hour and then he just started to go like really slow. Jesus. You know, and then I remember we passed a river crossing, which was actually not fluid river, you know, it was just like a, a dirty pool. As I was passing the water, I was thinking like, he's not going to do this, right? You know, like was it was a dirty pool of water. And then within one second, the guy hit his brakes and just went into that water like this. Gaat he? Is it fine? Oh man. He is like the dandy, the clean guy of us. And I was even, and I'm like the dirty guy. And I was even like, you know, I saw fish going away from him. He was just laying there, like trying to cool off in, in, in 40 degree water. It was crazy. And it took us maybe like one hour more to get back to Heiko, you know. And I remember us entering the gas station and... We are so... Fucked. Ligt hij dus na 430 kilometer in een weekend. Opgekruld als een baby. Het lichaam kan er niet zo heel veel aan. En de next day we went to Bentonville to raise rule of three. Voor de rest nog dingen meegemaakt vandaag niet veel, hè? We zitten nee. vandaag in een beetje in een rustige vibe, rustige flow. Rule of Three was a race we didn't uh, had big morale for, but at the end I got seventh. I think Thomas was also doing uh, doing a good race. Live camera beelden van de eerste groep, 60 kilometer achtervolgd. Maar we zijn er. Jasper en Iva zaten hier al. De Dutch Mafia is compleet. Hier zijn ze aan het ouwe Thomas, smile for the camera. Hey, uh, 80 kilometer, half. Half koers, half koers. Zit hij er gewoon hoor. Slikmeister is er aan het rijden natuurlijk. Nou, we zijn ongeveer uh, drie minuten naar mijn finish. Nu ziet hij er nog tof uit, zeg maar. En uh, lekker koers zit hij, of niet ook? En deze gast hier, hey, neem maar even in beeld. Gewoon netjes derde. Derde. De eer van de Dutch Mafia hoog houden. Derde en zevende zijn we gewoon. Ik denk dat Ivar mentaal wel een beetje gebroken is. Ik denk ja, dat we even wel moeten letten. Ja, 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 Jasper gaat goed op. Ja. Je moet met hem naar Dallas hoor, ik, want daar wilde ik het hier zijn. Ja, hij heeft ook niks. Ja, hij heeft ook geen kriteriums rijden. Er zijn drie kriteriums in Dallas. Dat wil ik. Ja, dat nee, dat moet hij niet gaan doen. Ik heb er echt geen zin in. Moet je niet gaan doen. Yes! Ready! De dag na Rule of Three. Zo'n vier ligt weer te tukken. Geeft papa weer de tijd om uh, paar visjes te vangen. Stay tuned. Here we got the famous Dan Dan. Let's catch some fish then. Huh? Yeah, so Dan, where are we going? Now we're going around the corner. Around the corner. There's yeah, even more fish around. The Number one. Best fishing buddy and also the owner of Dan Dan's Waffles. In the morning he makes the best waffles in town. Zo'n avondje. Zondagavond, 22 mei. Top. Zie je hoe groot die bek is? Ik pas bijna je vuist in, man. Mm -hmm. Goed, hè? We gaan het doen, de hele... Alleen. Hoppa, even een zakje met meel. Een plaatje vis is hier. We gaan die eten. Fresh from the shore. 
fried fish in a minute. But before we go up then, uh -huh. I ate at least one filet, yeah? Don't okay. tell them. Before we go up, the first one is well, in this stomach already. Yeah, well, don't tell them, but that's what I always do. Yeah. <laughs> ik heb mijn ouders bezig vissen. We hebben lekker gegeten. En we gaan uh, morgen? morgen onze retret in. En ik denk dat jullie dan een week lang niks van ons horen. Want dan heb je geen wifi, geen internet. Ik denk dat ik eigenlijk boeken ga lezen, Tom. Want... Omringd door idioten. Nu is de achterkant laat zien. Laat ze achter niet. Goed. En wees even voor. Heb je ooit ruzie gekregen omdat je iemand verkeerd begreep? Ja. <laughs> Verbaas je je soms over het totale onvermogen van anderen om jouw punt te zien? Ja, ja, ja. Of heb je er genoeg van dat er niet naar je geluisterd wordt? Jazeker, ja, ja, ja. Nou, dat is een boekje voor hem hoor. Omringd door idioten. Ik ben helemaal normaal, dat zie je toch? En dan uh, Monday after rule of three, Thomas en me went to Oklahoma. We gaan maar een week ons uh, zelf helemaal de bal uit de boeg gaan trainen. Dan we gaan nog één week op de pijnbank. The range of Fabian was there. No wifi, no internet. Really small town, Mar Marietta, Oklahoma. That's the official address. There was like, there was like a house that was so remote that you couldn't deliver like cliff blocks. We zijn al een kilometer op de oprit, Oklahoma. Hij gaat verder en we gaan nu even laten zien... Uh, hoe fucking vet het is waar we zitten. Precies. Ja, dus hier uh, slapen. Nou, daar staat onze, onze pick-up. Nou, jullie kunnen wel zien, daar aan de achterkant, waar Thomas nu heen fietst, heb je uitzicht op de rivier. Het is nu een beetje vervelend weer. Maar uh, Unbound Prep in volle gang vanuit deze casa. Hij zit vol met eten en drinken, zoals jullie hebben gezien. We hebben gisteren boodschappen gedaan voor 500 dollar. Serieus, voor 500 dollar voor een week. Dat het huis niet meer uit hoeft smiddags. Het was goed voor me en Thomas, you know, after the, the really uh, emotional and, 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 and intense first two weeks in, in the US. It was like time to, to, to not talk English anymore for a few days. So we did 500 dollars of groceries on the send, uh, I think on the Monday night when we arrived. And the first two days we didn't see anybody. It was just me and Thomas and the bike, you know, and so we trained. For a week over there to, to be good in her mouth. It happened to me on the balcony. I heard someone singing in the key of C. Goodbyes and love and freedom and tragedy. It got me spinning like a carousel. I had to take a vacation to the wishing well. To pound on the drums and ring all the bells. Hey, what a great day. En uh, Monday uh, Stevie en Dennis arrived. Wow. Wat is dit opeens in deze auto? <laughs> Wat een gelul. Kijk die ook alweer. Kijk, daar zit hij. En dan weer te drive uh, all the way to Cottonwood Falls, where our base for Unbound was. You know, a little village, half an hour drive from Emporia to prepare for Unbound for one week. So it was really nice that Dennis en Stefan got, uh, got there. You know, we could have like a road trip with the four of us and have some bullshit talk again. And we did a training. Parcours verkenning, Unbound. It's is een beetje nattig hier. Hoppa! Hadden we al getest, kan wel. It was like all kind of mellow and, and, and chilling and tapering for Unbound, you know. So that week was kind of easy, except for the Wednesday, where me and Thomas still wanted to do a big five hour ride, but it was raining like. Hell. De laatste lange training, een bal verkennen. Dat is op een parcours, maar we hebben alles gefietst, maar toch kijk eens hoe diep dit is, jongen. De parcours got so bad, we had to walk like small creeks, who turned out to be big rivers. We zitten op het parcours. My new bike was, was, was like put through the test like for 100% on the first day I rode it. I, I got my new pink diverge from Specialized that morning. Overlooking the parcours for uh, for Saturday. Most people would complete this in four to eight days. <laughs> Yesterday we did the first 60 miles, the first 100k. Yeah. And that's a really hard course. See the in the beginning up, 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 a little middle part with not many climbs, maybe some shorts, then a bigger one, up, 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 and then it's and all down. And also still. Then it's all down. Yeah, and also still 30k. 
okay to the rest zone. So it's kind of surprising. Uh, I think when you uh, make the left turn on the big road, we have to be focused for two and a half hours. Yeah. Just to stay in front, a lot of water, a lot of crossovers. Start. What do I bring in the start? Two liters, which is like half a gallon of, of, of noon electrolytes in my Nathan vest. Every half an hour a strip of cliff box. And this is just for the first 77 miles. Just that. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of fuel in this engine. Yep. After 125 kilometers, there's rest stop number one. In, in between rest stop one and two, we counted like it's more or less 140k, five hours of racing. I just told you I take two slips of blocks. So how many slips of blocks are here? 10. For the rest, again, a Nathan vest with electrolytes. Two bottles also filled with electrolytes. 65K before the finish. It's the last like rest stop. I'm planning to stop on there. We counted like two and a half hours. Three strips of blocks of, yeah, maybe I took for three hours just to be sure. Three strips of blocks, a bottle of Morton and two caffeine gels of Morton. Basically, that's it, what I eat during the race. On the side, you see the, the loop we used during the race. The wake up was 3.30. I think I slept for maybe five hours. And we, I think 4.45 we left. Make sure to, to stay out of trouble. That's the most important thing for the first two hours. And that's what I did. I, I ate, I drank. Then Paul Foss attacked after maybe 100k, so 220k to go. So I attacked to catch him and one guy came with me, Mattia de Marchi, the guy who won Traka. The three of us, we were working good together. So I really believed we could, uh, we could make it to the finish with the three of us. And then Paul Foss suddenly was dropped. Apparently we went fast. And also Mattia de Marchi was not pulling like, I didn't feel 100% commitment anymore for him. So I decided to test him on a climb, you know, like, are you really getting tired or are you playing with my balls? And when I went just a little bit faster, he dropped two. So there I was alone with maybe 150k to go, you know, like halfway. And I said, okay, this is like not the situation I, I hoped for. I hoped that they would bring me at least 100k further till 260, you know, 270. But, you know, I still felt good. I put my head down 40k, 45k an hour, and then it started to rain. I felt the, the gravel was going more soggy, so it got a little bit more heavy to, to push through. And suddenly I also noticed a headwind, and I first I didn't believe it, you know. I was thinking maybe the parkour changed like this, changed directions a little bit. So I was watching my compass, so. and I was going to the north, so I was going in the right direction, but the wind was, blow was blowing in my face, so the wind was blowing from the wrong direction, according to my calculations, and it, was, uh, it, it picked up, so I thought, like, shit, you know, like, my morale went down because I expected also the wind staying like that. And I went to, I went more slow and I remember like after 10k in the headwind like that, I looked around and I saw like five guys coming. They caught me on the, on the, on the, on the hardest, part, hardest moment of the parkour and actually basically they, they were still racing each other, you know, to try to drop another guy and they certainly wanted to drop me. So basically within two kilometers or one mile I was dropped again. And I remember being really pissed off with myself. And then uh, Russell Finsterwald and Rob Wrighton came to me and the three of us started to turn till the feed zone, which is at 265k. And then I remember entering the feed zone, kilometer 265, which somebody just said, hey guys, it's just three minutes, go get them. I told Russell, I, when, I'm, when I'm making myself angry now, I, we go get them. Eh? And he said, no way. I said, oh yeah, let's go try it. So we started to do turns, but like faster turns, 350, 380, you know. And after 10K, I suddenly saw like Ray in the, in the front. I saw like the, the, the black car with like five guys next to it. And I remember starting to go faster and faster and the car got bigger, the car got bigger. I suddenly it was 120, next corner it was 110. So I came closer, I came closer. Then I remember the going like, okay, I'm not going to watch my watts anymore. I just go now, you know coming back on the back wheel of Slick and I told him, hey motherfucker, next time wait for me. And he looked at me like, totally in surprise, like, where are you come from? I said, yeah, from behind. <laughs> Ian gave me the fist bump. And I remember like knowing like this race is going to be Eva's race. I trained with the guy, we live, he lives 5K from, from this place actually. 
And I, I know like when we do sprints or when we do like a small local club race, the guy is like unbeatable, you know, like he's so strong. And I knew, but the, I think the US guys didn't know. They all thought they still have a chance, but when they started the sprint, Evo was just like outstanding, you know, and I, I just immediately shut up. I, I, was called, I was okay with my fourth place and really happy for Evo to win. I had fun, I had a great day, I wanted to put on a big show, and I think I did. So, for me it was, a, again, the bullshit talk about the aero bars, and I was just like, fuck it, I go alone. I, I was proud that I was still in the mix in the final. We have a few interviews, go back to the big RV of Fabian and then the after party starts. So all the pros come to Fabian, we have barbecue, we have fajitas, we have beers. And, uh, and we wait for our friends to arrive. And Mount Gravel Fimich, 2022. Toch? Heel vet, hè? Ja, ja, for sure, I'll be back next year. You know, that's also the thing. You know, I'm 41 years old right now and I didn't think about it in the race, but after the race, uh, discussing with Thomas, you know, on the way back to our house in Cottonwood Falls, we said like, okay, you know, before you're always li a little bit doubting if you're getting too old to, to be in the mix, but with the race I put on on the gravel uh, of Emporia this year, I think I can safely say that I come back next year to, to do a good result too. We zitten hier dus gewoon op het voetveld met de grote kampioen, de grote kampioen. Wat te drinken en hij bestelt de hele tijd water. De, de community zou het echt waarderen als je een biertje drinkt. De gravel community. Ja, no peer pressure. Het is gelukt. Een derde biertje naar zijn winst.